Shalom everyone, Mike Scan here, Senior Pastor of Epic Life Church in Terrell, Texas, and welcome to another Three Minute Thursdays, where we take three minutes or less and look at topics and subjects of the Bible. Today, we're going to talk about the subject of Purim. Now, before we get started, don't forget to like the video and also click that bell icon so that you'll be notified every time a new Three Minute Thursday video comes out or another video from Epic Life Church. Now, let's get started. The question that we want to answer is, should Christians or can Christians celebrate Purim? So what is Purim? Now, Purim is found in the book of Esther, and it is a beautiful story and celebration of God's faithful love and care for his people. And really, that's what Purim is in its essence, is it's God's celebration of his delivering power to his people. Now, it's not a Moedim, which means it's not a commanded celebration such as we find in Leviticus 23. Matter of fact, it's not commanded within those. But then the, it's, it's a lot like Hanukkah, uh, likened to Hanukkah as a commandment or a celebration, so you can celebrate it if you want to. The Bible tells us, though, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, many of you all know this, it says that all Scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for correction, for reproof, and for training in righteousness. And I believe Esther is included in all scripture. So it's a great book that you need to go back and read, but it's also a celebration that I think we all can do. So we find the story of Esther and the story of Purim in the book of Esther, chapter nine, verses 25 through 28. And real quickly, just says, but when it came to the king's attention, he issued a written decree that, that the wicked scheme Haman had devised against the Jews should come back on his own head. He and his son should be hanged at the gallows. For this reason, these days were called Purim, from the word pur. Therefore, because of everything in this letter and because of what they had seen and what had happened to them, uh, the Jews established and took upon themselves, upon their descendants, and upon all who will join with me, remember that, that they would commemorate these two days in the way prescribed and at the appointed time every year. Verse 28, these days should be remembered and observed in every generation by every family and in every providence and in every city. These days of Purim should not fail from among the Jews, nor the remembrance perish from their descendants. See, Esther is an amazing story of how Queen Esther, in her bravery, approaches uh, her king after hearing about an assassination plot against him by her cousin Mordecai. Mordecai had came to her, he had gotten information about this and went to the queen and the queen wanted to approach um, her husband. But there was a law that said unless the king summoned her, she couldn't come. So she asked the Jewish people, her, her kinsfolk, to pray and fast as she made the approach. And we see this in Esther chapter five, verses one through three. On the third day, Esther put on her royal apparel and stood in the inner court of the palace in front of the king's hall. The king was sitting on his royal throne in the hall, facing the entrance. When the king saw Queen Esther standing in the courtyard, she found favor in his eyes. So the king held out to Esther the golden scepter in his hand and Esther approached and touched the top of the scepter. Then said to the king to her, what is it, Queen Esther? Whatever you request, even as much as half of the kingdom, it will be given to you. But because of her bravery of Queen Esther, the entire Jewish people were saved and allowed to defend themselves from Haman's men. So it was commemorated for with a two-day celebration that all who are Jewish and those who are joined to them could celebrate with a day of fasting the day before and then two days of celebration of feasting for the next two days. Christians are encouraged to join in this celebration of God's faithfulness and the deliverance of Jewish people because we have joined ourselves with them, right? It is a great reminder to all who follow Yeshua that God is still in the business of deliverance from all our enemies. On March 13th, during our service, we want to encourage all of our children to do two things. Number one, dress up as kings and queens, representing King Assyrius and Queen Esther, and join us up front as we read through the story of Queen Esther. As a matter of fact, your children are gonna read through the story uh, for themselves here at Epic Life Church. So we wanna invite you all to be a part of that. And uh, so make plans to join us on March 13th as we celebrate 
this Purim, this amazing celebration of God's power and of deliverance. I love you guys. Thank you so much for joining us on this Three Minute Thursday. I hope this helped you. Go study it for yourself. Open your Bible to Esther. It's like nine or 10 chapters, really easy read, and discover for yourself the secret of Purim. God bless you.